dear friends how are you all doing i hope you're all doing fine welcome back to my channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for returning back here thank you for your love and your support i really appreciate much but if it is your first time here on this channel hello welcome to my channel please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe youtube automatically will turn on that notification bell so that whenever i upload any video you will be the first one to be notified so please do that and thank you so much for subscribing so dear friends today is the day yeah i promised you last week i'll be bringing this love story to you all so that you get to enjoy it you get to learn lots lots of things so in our today's video we are going to be having a story time of a ugandan lady by the name of rachel 24 years old and a single mother of one. Rachel found love on online dating app after two years of searching. Found love with an amazing German guy. That guy is not only amazing, but a very rich, rich guy. And guys, as you know me, I don't just bring stories to brag like this lady is my own baby, my own product. Start telling you, oh, my baby found a rich guy and blah, 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 blah. No, guys, every love story is to help you. You who is on online dating apps, sites searching for love so that you get to learn so that you can you know relate with your own situation for example like rachel's love story when you hear she found a rich guy without listening well her love story to know how it went how she even found that rich guy on the dating sites and you've been there searching you know coming across those losers that immediately they start even asking you money <laughs> instead of spoiling you so you'll be like oh my god some ladies are very very lucky why it's only me why me but me sharing with you every step that this lady passed through and then found the one really helps you at the end of the video be like oh so now i've gained energy i'm so encouraged that even me can be lucky to find that rich guy on the dating sites or apps i can be lucky to find true love on the dating sites and apps because rachel was on the dating apps and sites searching for true love not for a rich guy but god blessed her more by bringing a rich guy to her we all know that the struggle is real it's not easy you know to find love online but it's not impossible <laughs> and one thing i'm so sure about that can help you have been helping you we have been hearing lots of success stories even this one it's because of the stories i've been sharing here because of my videos I focus on real of how things are the good side and the bad side <laughs> yeah grab a glass of wine a glass of water some popcorns <laughs> and maybe some tissue because you're gonna be crying also <laughs> and enjoy this love story you will learn a lot guys a lot a lot a lot so without wasting much of your time let us jump into this beautiful unique love story dear friends rachel's love story starts in uganda and tells us is coming from the northern part of uganda and actually by tribe was raised by a single mother though tells us kept in touch with her biological father they were born too so rachel has a brother and that's it <laughs> also adds that she comes from a family which is not rich, but not poor as well. Her parents are very well educated. They've got good jobs. So they did the best to take them to good schools. So guys, Rachel went to primary school and after primary school, went to a secondary school. So tells us while at school, had made up her mind that when she grows up, will become a flight attendant yeah so in her form four started doing some research how to become a flight attendant 
and aviation in general. Kept on doing research and reached a point was really tired. So did her phone fall and passed very, very well because was such a bright student at school. So while at home, before going for a level, one time meets up with her OGs, two guys that they started together. They had branched from form four. They didn't go to a level. Straightly went to study piloting. So when she met up with those guys, they told her that if you are interested in being a flight attendant or a pilot, because these were the things that she was interested in, in you can also go straight without going for a level so had to communicate with her mother about it so when she told her mother that wanted to go straight study to be a flight attendant without going to a level the mother didn't take it the good way was really upset with her told her no you're going to do a level and go do law but rachel tells us really never wanted to study law for her was so interested in aviation being a flight attendant or a pilot so her mother kept on saying no 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 you're going to study law and here was like you know bella how flight attendant is being termed to be a job for pro so that is why her mother was really biased about it. <laughs> so she said, I'm not going to support you on this. I'm not going to pay for that. But luckily, the father came in and was like, no problem. If your mother is saying no, it's not going to pay for that. I will pay for it. So guys, after the father accepting to pay for her school fees, decided to go to that school, you know, to find some more information. Arriving at Ugandan Aviation Academy, told her needed to go to A-level to do cabin crew. But told her, you can do the equivalent. Start with airline customer service, then later do cabin crew. So guys, Rachel joined Ugandan Aviation Academy and started with airline customer service while doing airline customer service that is when she got to learn other things like air dispatch and piloting so she did that passed very well then decided to do flight operation and dispatch also passed that very very well that is when immediately got connected to go to work in entebbe with an airline called Aerolink. Ugandans, you will know that airline. So went to work as a flight dispatcher, but a trainee one for three months. So after those three months, that is when she was going to get paid permanently. So yeah, she started working, all was going really good. And after working for some time, tells us one day flew in this pilot from Kenya called Captain Ron. This Captain Ron had hired a private flight from Kenya to Uganda. So he landed at Aerolink Base. And remember, it's Rachel who was there dispatching the flights. So when he flew in, got to meet Rachel, and that's when Rachel came to find out he flew in to tour Ugandan skies. Yeah, so he was there for something like two weeks. And that day when he met Rachel, asked for her phone numbers. <laughs> Rachel exchanged the phone numbers. She was single and young. <laughs> At that time was 21 years old. Yeah, so they exchanged numbers and in the evening, Captain Ron wrote to her, you know, started giving her compliments, was like, is so attracted to beautiful ladies who are so intelligent, just like Rachel. So he kept on writing to her friends and one good day asked Rachel out. So yeah, when they went out, they ate their dinner because it was a dinner date. Rachel said during the day couldn't meet him because of work. Though sometimes too, she could go on a night shift, you know, to dispatch the flights. Yeah, but that day was free in the evening. They went for dinner, all went good. And he repeated 
what he was writing to her while messaging, telling her he's attracted to beautiful women and intelligent women. Captain Ron was 46 years old and Rachel, like I said, was 21. But told Rachel is very, very interested in her and would like Rachel to be his girlfriend. So, so here Rachel says is not attracted to young guys, never dated while at school. <laughs> He's so attracted to older guys. So Captain Ron's age wasn't a problem. She even said if a guy is 35 years old and down, <laughs> she will do you a favor to date you. So she told Captain Ron it's okay. And that's when they became boyfriend and girlfriend started dating. So yes, Captain Ron stays in Uganda, keeps on touring Ugandan skies. And when his time was over, when he was going back to Kenya, because Captain Ron used to work with Kenya Airways. This guy wasn't even a Kenyan guy, was Rwandan from Rwanda. So before he travels, brings this offer, a very, very good offer to Rachel. Tells her, I would like you to upgrade. Do your private pilot license and later on, do your commercial pilot license. I would pay for all that, but it will be good if you come to Kenya to do that. Then we are going to be staying together. So tells us, though they are not badly off, financially in her family but when it comes to pay for piloting it was really a struggle so here rachel tells ron yeah i think this is a very good idea ron tells her yeah it's so good so that we can be traveling together after you finish all that because he is a pilot and she was going to be a pilot too when she finishes her studies I had to talk to her parents her parents were very very excited and supported her so captain ron returned to kenya rachel remained in uganda preparing herself and after one month was ready go join him in kenya but now rachel tells you that thinking about it was really stupid back then but again says i was only trying to chase my dream dear <laughs> so yeah eventually rachel joined him in kenya and did her private pilot license he paid for all of it and when she finished it and when she was preparing to go do her commercial pilot license then got an offer from proactive but this offer it's Captain Ron that connected her to it. So she took that offer, was like, yeah, I will be working at the same time doing my commercial pilot license. So yeah, started working with Proactive at the same time, studying for her commercial pilot license. Then it happened that they were supposed to do some tests. Because tells us aviators normally do medical tests, medical examinations. <laughs> yeah. So they did lots, lots of tests, testing different things. And that's when she came to find out was five months pregnant. Tells us had no signs at all, at all. Was super shocked. But at the same time, excited, yeah, because knew had someone who really loved her so much and they had so good plans for the future together. So went to the hospital and then confirmed, yes, was five months pregnant, had to tell the fiancé because he had engaged her already. So when she told the fiancé, he was okay about it and very, very happy. So guys, to take you a little bit back, Rachel tells us when she started working with Proactive, her permit was in the process. So without that permit, was not going to be able to open a bank account in Kenya. So that is when Captain Ron suggested that they open a joint account so that Rachel's salary would be deposited into that joint bank account. Rachel accepted, had no option. So they could use that bank account together. Yeah, and it kept on like that. When Rachel was six months pregnant, 
discovered something that changed her life completely yeah so was like bella you know as women we have that a woman's intuition so my intuition kept on telling me something was off because all the time whenever ron's phone could ring this guy could rush somewhere else to pick the calls so I was like, why? Why is he doing that? Really got so curious. And also all the time she was in Kenya, very few time could stay with Ron. She could stay alone. Ron could hardly be at home. All the time could tell her, I have flights, I have flights. And she could be like, I understand because the guy is a pilot. <laughs> yeah. But that thing of the phone really kept on coming into her mind like no Rachel something is wrong so one day he was in the bathroom and then took his phone knew the password to his phone so started reading the messages so going through the messages that is when she discovered that Ron had other two women. Yeah, his wives. <laughs> oh my God. One was in Germany and the second was in the UK. So apparently both of these women were not able to give Captain Ron a child. And he looked at himself as like, I'm getting old. I don't have any child. So he could sleep around with women to find a woman who will give him a child and that's when he came across our poor rachel so rachel tells us finding out that captain ron was married wasn't a single guy really broke her so much but knew that wasn't going to do polygamous relationship though they were already engaged so decided to end everything with captain ron so yeah that is how everything ended she was now seven months pregnant and remember it's captain ron that connected her to proactive so talk to that person that connected her with proactive to fire her and yes guys rachel was fired yeah that's how she lost her job oh my god some guys can be really cruel for God's sake, she's the mother of your unborn baby and pregnant. How can you do that? But yeah, he did it. So guys, when Ron went out of her life, was all alone in a foreign country. Didn't have any friend. The only friend she had, had slept with Captain Ron. So they ended everything. Did not want to tell her mother because never wanted to disappoint her. Also, the society view on a lady who gets pregnant before marriage. The criticism, the judgments, you know, so decided to just keep quiet. Was like, no, I have little money that I saved aside because could not access that joint bank account that they had with Ron. So it was like, I'm not going to go home. I'm going to struggle, look for a job. At least when I have something, I can go home. Rachel never wanted to drag her mother into that because going back home, you know, when the society starts talking of how she got pregnant, she has a child with an unknown father, it was going to affect her and her mom too as well. So to avoid everything, that is why she chose to remain in Kenya. And guys, you know what? Life is really full of surprises. Rachel says, thought had it all going great, at least at her age, was somewhere. But only life just to happen. So guys, she kept on staying in Kenya alone, her pregnancy growing, you know, applying for jobs here and there. But <laughs> remember, she was heavily pregnant. So eventually... 
the day came for her to deliver her baby. Went to Nairobi Hospital, Lanata, alone and was in labor for 20 hours. Those as active labor, it was eight hours. And at some point, the baby got stuck because the baby was really big and Rachel had a very small pelvis. So the doctors were losing the baby's heart rate. Had to be rushed to an emergency to do a C-section on her so that they can save the baby. And here is like Bella, I saw death. And I can totally understand her. Being a mother, oh my God. I remember when I was delivering Sophie. Guys, I've never felt that kind of pain in my life. I'll never forget it. Ah! So Rachel tells us was there all alone, you know, the nurses asking her, where are your parents? When are your relatives going to come? She could be like, they will come, but not now. But remember, no one knew that Rachel was pregnant in her family. And also tells us had paid for a normal delivery package but this c-section came as an emergency so she was supposed to add more money for that emergency package so she paid really lots lots of money tells us in kenyan shillings 290,000 kenyan shillings which is approximately to 7 million ugandan shillings lots lots of money that she even didn't plan for because had paid for a private room so yes guys eventually delivered her cute baby boy <laughs> i really love that boy very very much yeah so they stayed in the hospital for four days and after those four days were discharged to go back home arriving home was all alone could do everything alone remember she just had a c-section but didn't have anyone like a nanny so could wash clothes clean the house you know take care of the baby and all that it was really really difficult for her so it was like bella i suffered i really really suffered and again guys i understand her <laughs> she is a new mom in a foreign country moreover had a c-section alone <laughs> for me i was just here in italy when i had sophie with my husband but when he could go to work leave me with sophie i could get confused completely could start crying <laughs> wishing i was in tanzania you know with my sisters taking care of me spoiling me <laughs> don't do anything don't move you're gonna take care of the baby <laughs> and it is just an imagination it wasn't going to happen so i could just cry and cry so imagine this lady alone no husband no one it was really a lot so here rachel is like some time back, before all this saga, when she was still with Ron, had come across my YouTube channel. <laughs> and when she came across my YouTube channel, really laughed, was like, hmm, some people will do anything, you know, to get money on YouTube. Look at this one. I really don't know how she even came up with this whole idea of telling stories. <laughs> And she clicked off my channel. Imagine, guys. <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me so much because most of my real, real fans, <laughs> before they criticized me a lot, and they came and told me about it. Like, two of my babies really opened up and they were like, Bella, when we came across your channel, <laughs> first of all, when you could laugh, Hey. could be like what is she laughing about and why is she laughing all the time what is wrong with her <laughs> and even one when she came across my youtube channel told a friend look at this one she is laughing all the time and whenever she could be watching my videos and telling a friend a friend could be like ah that one who laughs a lot <laughs> But later, she was like, oh my god, Bella, you can't imagine. Right now, when you laugh, I laugh too. <laughs> After sitting down, listening to you, careful, I was like, oh my god, she makes sense. <laughs> All that she says. So, Rachel too was like, huh, 
people can do anything to earn money on YouTube. <laughs> Without knowing, some months later, would come back running to the same channel looking for help. These were her words, and I will see if I have enough time. I'll put her voice note. <laughs> You listen to her, yeah. <laughs> and also, when she started telling me this story, was like, oh my God, Bella, you just don't know how happy and excited I am. It's like I'm talking to a celebrity crush. For me, I laughed a lot. I was like, God, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. But she said, Bella, I really appreciate much. Your videos have helped me so, so much. So let's go back. Yeah, some months before the saga had said that. <laughs> hey, Bella. Oh, my word. I am so excited. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, it just feels like I'm talking to um, a celebrity crush or something of that sort. Yeah, I am excited. Oh, my word. So, so happy and so, so grateful you reached out you replied and like it's just exciting gosh coming across your channel really helped me a lot like gosh it really helped me out bella i don't know yeah i am so grateful to you aside from god it was god but then you as well i truly applaud you for that yeah so i'll give you a bit of history Mm, about how my past was how i ended up being a single mother obviously <laughs> the juicy stuff <laughs> you better grab your puppies get your popcorn i remember before all this that girl yeah i remember coming across your channel and i laughed <laughs> i'm like mm -hmm. people will do anything for money just to make money on youtube and now this one how do you how did she even come up with this idea yeah to talk about stories and all that <laughs> Ah, not knowing after some months I would run back to the same channel to look for help <laughs> so yeah um, when the baby was about 4 months like I, I was still watching YouTube videos and I'm like and so I came across your channel again I'm like oh, let me just watch the story she just posted you know out of curiosity and all that so it was a story I like uh, a lady who found love, I've forgotten, a, a Zambian to a German guy, something like that, I've forgotten, yeah, so I'm like, wait, there's actually interest, I could actually, let me, let me just try a dating site just for fun, I remember that time, um, you, you had, you had whatever listed, um, sites like Afro, um, I, after just hearing Afro introductions, I, I immediately, like left the channel <laughs> to go to rush to Afro to try to just check what it's like what goes on there and all that so I joined Afro introductions I actually paid for it and I think this is my best friend Mwansa, Mwansa's love story <laughs> yeah so she watched that video and then kept on watching you know some of my videos but was like Bella to be honest it's not that I could settle and watch your videos. Still, I could just click, watch a little and, you know, click off or forward the video to the end. <laughs> yeah, I was acting like a hater. <laughs> yeah. So watch that video and after some time, I uploaded another video recommending dating sites and apps to try so watch that video and when i mentioned afro introductions never wanted to listen anything else rushed to google searched for afro introductions and joined immediately <laughs> after joining tells us even paid <laughs> but if she could have listened to me I said in that video don't pay for these dating sites you can use afro introductions on a free version but this lady had Afro introduction, went to Afro introduction <laughs> without enough information. So tells us when she went to Afro introductions was really excited. You know, that excitement is the first time, you know, to join the dating sites, knew that or was telling herself she will find the right guy that same, same day. <laughs> But then the reality started hitting her, like, you know, remember, you are a single mother. 
and here really made me so sad but it's the reality it was like you know how the society is when you become a single mother how we have grown up you know listening to these words and they have sticked to our mind even when we grow up the view on a lady who gets pregnant before marriage the view on a single mother when you become a single mother your life is over you be treated like an outcast you know like something rejected that's how things are in most of our African society. So she got scared and was like, who will even want me? I'm a single mother, sadly. So deleted Afro introductions and never wanted anything to do with the dating apps and sites. So yeah, kept on with her life, still no job. And when her son reached six months, kept on watching my videos, all the stories that I could upload. So started seeing stories of single mothers. Maybe a lady is a single mom of one, single mom of two, three, four, five, but found love online. So she gained confidence and was like, hmm, even me as a single mother of one, I can still find love. If this lady found love online and we are hearing their success stories, why not me? I think I can still give dating apps a try. But still, guys, Rachel was like, Bella, at that time, I could not settle and concentrate on your videos to watch full. <laughs> still, she could click, listen a little and forward to the end. <laughs> but was still interested to join dating sites and apps. So what she did had to run to Google and Google recommended to her Interracial Dating Central. So when she joined Interracial Dating Central, those us after two days found this guy from the UK. His name is Alex. So yeah, Rachel got this message from a guy named Alex from the UK and she replied after replying to him alex was like i don't want to stay on the site so i would like us to exchange whatsapp numbers so that you can even do a video call get to see ourselves so when rachel heard that i was like wow he is an actual person if he wants to do a video call so they exchanged whatsapp numbers and then started chatting on whatsapp and yes guys alex made a video call showed around and even you know talked a lot a lot of things about himself you know revealing who he is rachel was so happy and also told him in their call that he is a single father too has got a son his son is 10 years old lost to the wife in an accident actually was married to a Tanzanian lady. So after losing her, spent lots, lots of time taking care of his son until he grows. Now the age that he is, Alex was ready to start dating, was looking for a woman who has kids too, so that they would understand each other. He is a single parent and the lady is a single parent too. So yeah, they connected, clicked very, very well. The conversation was really flowing. So friends, Rachel kept on dating Alex, all going super, super good. But remember guys, Rachel did not have any experience of how online dating can be, how some guys can behave on the dating sites. Plus, this lady did not have any experience on relationships in general <laughs> at school never dated the first guy that she dated was ron who broke her heart yeah so she keeps on dating alex and tells us sometimes they could be talking on a video call then her son could cry so when the son could cry alex could tell her ah you just leave him alone he will calm down on himself but she could just end the call and go attend to her child never took that very seriously but guys actually that was a red flag a very very big red flag because rachel's child was not even to one year so that child really needed the mother's attention <laughs> so a guy telling her you just leave him to cry it shows the guy never even liked 
children. So he was the guy to stay away from. During all that time, they are dating, everything is going well. It reached for months and never asked any assistance from this guy, maybe asking him for money or anything, not at all. So after those four months, then Alex comes up with a request. Tells Rachel, you know, I have money in my bank account, but I cannot access it for now. I am in need of money. And one thing I want to tell you about Rachel, you will get to know her very well as I keep on with the story, is a very generous lady. She has that soft heart. <laughs> so when she had Alex's request, was like, it's okay, baby. You don't need to explain a lot. You just tell me how much you need. Then Alex was like, I need 60 pounds. Rachel was like, it's fine. I've got some little money with me. I will send it to you send 60 pounds to alex alex was happy thank you so much baby and all that <laughs> guys if you've been following my videos listening attentively up to now you know rachel is in trouble already because <laughs> money talks are to be avoided when you are chatting with a guy online when you hear money talk what do you do run run girl <laughs> but rachel didn't run <laughs> and you'll get to know why she did not run so rachel did not run reason number one i've told you already did not have enough experience on online dating the second reason is that alex had told her whenever you need something whenever you need money please let me know please tell me i'll be happy to help so <laughs> Alex asking her money thought that yes, I'm giving him this money, but I know when I'm in need, he will help me too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they keep on dating. And, and then again, Alex comes up with another request. So he tells her again, wanted to get something. I think wanted to buy some Christmas gifts for his son, <laughs> but couldn't access his money again. And Rachel was like, deep down, I really loved this guy. I was so stupid. If I had dedicated my time to watch your videos, I wouldn't have been so stupid. Yeah. So he asks again for money in the name of his son. And Rachel is like, baby, you don't need to explain anything. <laughs> and he knew Rachel was going to give him that money. I told you with these scammers, even players, they know how to choose their victims. They will test you with something to see how you react about it. So he tested her with the 60 pounds. She said yes. He knew even the second time she will agree. He was super, super sure. And yes, Rachel was like, how much do you need, baby? <laughs> so here, Alex tells her, I need 250 pounds. And also when it comes to what this guy used to do for a living, told Rachel had some security business. But Rachel was like, Bella, for me, I wasn't looking for any rich guy. I wasn't even interested in his businesses. <laughs> but it's wrong, guys. Even if you're a lady out there who is not looking, you know, for any rich guy online, you are searching for true love. Remember, a guy should be financially stable. It's not a must that he should be rich don't get me wrong but he should be financially stable so when you're chatting with a guy get to know what he does for a living there are some jobs guys will tell you and you go to research you find out that he will be with that job for only some time it's not a permanent job so if you meet a guy like that online it's kind of risky to start a relationship with him because he is not financially stable. I told you even, for example, here in Italy, men really take so long to get married or to be independent. <laughs> you find a guy is 35 years old, still living with his parents. Why is that? Finances. Because here, for someone to get married, it means he can take care of his family. His finances 
and stable he has got a stable job no matter you're not looking for a rich guy make sure you know what he does for a living and do some research get to confirm if it's true that job exists get to confirm if it's true that business exists okay don't be like no i'm not interested you know i just want true love <laughs> Remember, this guy has to pay for your ticket to his country, your traveling costs, or if he's to come to Africa, if you are in Africa or in the Caribbean, in Asia, wherever part of the world you are, money should get out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah, always put that in mind. But Rachel was like, no, I'm not interested. Baby, don't explain, you know why you need this money so she loved him very much but added bella i was really lonely and you guys can understand she was in a foreign country with a small baby no friends nothing so wanted someone to talk to coming across alex really was super super good she felt so good to have someone to talk with to have someone that accepts you to have someone that tells you i understand your situation so she sent him that 250 pounds but actually she was running out of money she had remained with very very little money and with lots of bills to pay her rent was expiring very very soon was supposed to buy food baby formula pay bills for water pay bills for electricity and all of that but sent him that money this really makes me so sad was like bella i had to send him that money because i was like if i refuse to send him that money and then he leaves me i was really really scared i was in a fear you know to be rejected and ditched so i wanted to keep him but she's like gosh i don't know why i didn't see this bella also sadly this guy had manipulated rachel all the time could tell her that you are a single mother no one will want you at all at all so every day could remind him how he is special you know in her life because he is the only guy that can accept her but guys if you see rachel <laughs> she is beautiful very very beautiful and i think you heard her voice she has also got a very very beautiful voice just like the way she is very beautiful in and out but these online dating guys can really destroy someone's mentality can really make your self-esteem go down because her self-esteem was really really down was like this is the only guy that has accepted me you know as a single mother i should keep him he is everything to me that is why whatever he could ask she could give and he did that so that he can keep on taking her money he can keep on manipulating her but if you are a single mother watching this video never ever allow anyone to tell you that your life is over just because you are a single mother not at all i've been posting videos here of success stories of single mothers who found love online if you remember mariana's story a single mother of seven who found love online and now is enjoying her happily ever after so it's not over at all at all don't listen to the words of the losers online even if it is offline don't listen to anyone so rich tells us after sending all that money had remained with only thirty thousand kenyan shillings but her rent to be paid was forty thousand kenyan shillings was supposed to buy diapers baby formulas all the bills were on her and that's when she was like what can i do because i helped alex it's time to also ask alex to help me out because how am i going to survive i haven't found a job yet so told us she remembered it was january 2022 talked to alex was like alex you know the money that i had i sent it to you so right now i'm supposed to pay the rent and i really don't know how to do that so i request you to help me out 
Alex was like, okay, I will see what I can do because my son has a trip that I have to pay. But let's see, let's see. I will let you know. So she's like, fine, and was relaxed knowing Alex will really do something. So time passes and Alex keeps on writing to her, calling her, and remembers that today they made a video call, a week passed, so they made a video call and Alex was like, yeah, we're at the mall, I did shopping for my son, clothes, and I even bought him a tablet. <laughs> so that's when Rachel is like, Alex, I'm reminding you about the rent, you know, the money that I asked you. So when Alex had that, kept quiet for a moment and then was like, ah, I told you I will see. I will get back to you. So Rachel told him, please, Alex, get back to me by tomorrow. So yeah, the next day he keeps on writing to her, calling her, but not talking of money. She was like, let me wait for two more days. <laughs> so she waited for those two days. She tried to send messages to Alex, but he wasn't online. So tried to call, but the calls were not going through. That is when she checked and saw that the photos had disappeared. Even their chats realized that Alex had blocked her. Oh my God, it was a very, very big shock to her. So Rachel at that time tells you that no money, no formula, no diapers, nothing at all. And the landlord wants his money. That is when she thought it was time to go back home but at the same time was like how can i go home my parents don't know anything that i have a child yes her mom could send her messages how are you doing when are you coming home she could tell her mom i am fine it's only that i am busy with school but i will come home they knew was still schooling doing her commercial pilot license so she is the only daughter like i told you and tells us she prays, but the way her mom prays is on another level. So her mom could pray and pray and pray and started having dreams, dreams showing her that her daughter was in trouble. So started calling Rachel, but Rachel could avoid the calls because <laughs> I was like, if I pick the call, she's going to hear the baby's voice. <laughs> and what will I explain about that? So she could say, I will call you later. I will call you, I will call you, but never call sends messages to her mom. So yeah, things were really, really bad. And she decided to call her mom and ask her for money. So was like, mom, I need some money. Her mom was like, what is it for? It is to buy the captain uniform. And was like, my mom knew captain's uniforms are very, very expensive. So never asked so much questions or wanting to see, you know, the proof, the receipts, nothing like that. So she sent her 80,000 Kenyan shillings, which is approximately 2.5 million Ugandan shillings. That is when she got to clear her rent, buy food, and yeah, at least money took her for some weeks. After some weeks, everything was over. She had nothing, nothing at all. So you're going to ask yourself, but the baby daddy was there. He is a pilot, has money. Why not help Rachel? When Rachel said no to the relationship, this guy too abandoned his son. Never wanted to do anything with the son or Rachel. He could not send any money to Rachel for the upkeep of his son, sadly. So guys, remained in the house, there was no food, nothing, and the son was nine months old. So because there was no food, the only thing she could do is to breastfeed her child. So the baby sucked all the milk, remained, you know, that fainted milk, the clear one, almost to water. And you know when the baby is eating only that, of course, it can't do anything to him. He will still feel hungry. So the baby could cry and cry until he sleeps. He wakes up, sucks that fainted milk and cry and cry and cry. It was really a hard, hard situation, guys. Remembers that day that she will never forget. When she thinks about it, 
cries a lot so it was one evening and because did not have the diapers I had to take her baby's bed sheet and a polythene bag you know those trash bags and then tied it on him as the diaper looked at her child and cried a lot was like I have failed my child as a mother when I had that, I can tell you I cried. I told you my childhood wasn't easy at all. So sometimes when I hear or I see such kind of situations, they really take me back. I remember when I was very little, we had neighbors and our neighbors were really rich. So in Uganda, at least those days, we used to take breakfast and most of our breakfast was not, you know, the tea. It used to be porridge, but not porridge of finger millet, no, porridge of maize, yeah. So our mom could prepare for us porridge, but, you know, no sugar. But we had neighbors that, you know, they could take tea with bread or if their mother could prepare for them porridge, it could be porridge with milk, with sugar, Oh my God, I remember wishing to be in that family, you know, that rich family. I could see my mother's face, my mother's desperation, feeling really bad when we could cry for things that she couldn't afford. And I'm telling you guys, me being a mother now, it's not a good situation for a mother to find herself in. So I really felt Rachel so, so much. When she cried, looked at her child and was like, I have failed my child. I have terribly failed my child, you know, wrapping him up in a polythene bag, using it as a diaper. So that very day, Rachel started having suicide thoughts, was like, you know, it is the only thing that is going to help me end all these sufferers. Yeah, even forgot had a child so had to think of her child was like if i take my life eventually my child will be dumped into an orphanage what will be of my child so from there tells us it's her child that saved her life that day if it wasn't for her child she could have committed suicide so after realizing she has got a child and has to keep on fighting struggling for her child was like it's time to talk to my mom i have to tell her the truth you know of what has been happening sorry guys i got so so emotional so decided to text her mom told her everything you know the truth and was like mom we want to come home but we are stuck we don't have any money tells us her mom did not fume did not say anything only it's okay and the next day sent her the money but back home her mom that night did not sleep at all cried cried so much after hearing everything that the daughter went through so tells us when her mom sent her food they had spent two days without eating the baby crying a lot because was so hungry so she went bought food after buying food tells you guys the way the baby rushed to eat that food the way the baby was eating that food when she remembers cries so much so they ate started planning for their trip and eventually traveled by bus the baby cried cried a lot in the bus because there was no ac in that bus you know how the buses are if you have ever traveled from nairobi to kampala uganda for me i've traveled with those buses so for a child it was really difficult but rachel thanked god that she was eventually going back home tells us had lost lots lots of weight looked really different didn't have even that baby tummy anymore so they started their journey from the bus stop to rachel's mother's house so arriving home her mother tried to get to know the baby went on and switched on the heater for the baby showed that i am here for you i am your mother no matter what happened i am here for you i am your mother and really thanks her mom because she did not fume tells us if she fumed 
she was going to run away from home doesn't know where but she could have run away from home and guys i'm telling you rachel is very very lucky to have her mom alive you imagine if her mom wasn't alive what could have happened to this lady the worst the worst because sometimes you be like let me hold tight let me hold tight but sometimes you reach to an extent all the energy goes away of you keeping on holding tight that is why we should always keep god into our lives during our difficult time and our good times you know all the time keep god into your life because that time that is so difficult or you have people around you but they don't understand you they don't understand what you're going through only god can understand you you can find comfort in god so dear friends this video has been really long we still have a lot to know about rachel's love journey and we still have a lot to learn from her love journey so next time i'm going to come with part two which will be the last part <laughs> and the last part oh my god you guys are going to laugh a lot you are going to learn a lot you're going to enjoy it so so much we'll get to know how she came across that rich rich guy online and what helped her to win his heart <laughs> so you who is out there and is like no me too i want a rich guy <laughs> i'm searching for a rich guy online <laughs> you get to learn how to win a rich guy's heart <laughs> Because it wasn't easy, eh? <laughs> Don't think it was easy, guys. So get to know all that juicy, juicy story in the last part, which I'll be uploading very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video till now. I really appreciate you much for your love and your support. May God bless you. If you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Watch my other videos too. They are super, super good. Comment below what you think about this video. I would like to know. Until next time, guys, I love you so much. You're always here, guys, here in my heart. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.